Hey y'all, guess who's back? It's David the Dog Trainer, and I'm here with Mr. Freddy. Man, I've got an amazing tip for you right now, right out of the gate. Oh, and I am, I am back, at least temporarily, with a little dog tip. It's been a minute. It's been a crazy pandemic. It's been a lot going on. But man, oh man, I've got a tip for you right away. Look at this, that's a bully stick. And uh, Mr. Freddy, who you're gonna be seeing momentarily, when I came in to visit today, he was uh, a little bit jumpy, as puppies can do. But the minute I grabbed this and I held it down here at kind of dog level, the minute I had this in my hand, he was no longer jumping on me. Oh, he's drinking, let's get a shot. Look at that handsome boy. Look at that handsome boy drinking that water. Anyway, of course, you know, he was jumping up like dogs do because they're so darn cute and they just want to be closer to us. Um, they want to greet us and until they've really learned that jumping up is not a great way to greet human beings, they're going to do it. So while you're installing a nice sit to greet and that kind of thing, uh, having a chewable, something like a bully stick, hold it in your hand, bring it down to their level, give them a job. Give your dog a job. What do you want them to do? That's what I'm always asking myself. Well, if my dog's doing something problematic, uh, at least to the human, it's, a, it's not a problem for the dog usually, but it could be a problem for us. What do I want them to do instead? And that's what I will train them to do. Let's go do some more stuff with Mr. Freddy. So we went to the bathroom outside. Obviously I want to reward that. Good boy. Hey, Mr. Freddy, come here. Why are you licking that rock? Sit. Good, sit. Very good job. Good boy. So what I tend to do uh, as a habit is, so the dog does a behavior that I like. Mr. Freddy, sit. I'm gonna show him a hand signal. Yes, what a good boy. Good boy, and then I praise him and then I deliver. And I try to deliver while he's down in that position. I don't want him to jump up and collect the snack from my hand because that will probably reward the jumping. Good boy. Wait. But what, I, oh, what a good boy. But what I do want to do is I want to reward him right in that position while his butt's down, which obviously he didn't quite accomplish because I, I made him wait. I don't lick that rock. That's bizarre. Nobody needs to lick a rock. Who does that? He's like, I do. Good boy, what a good sit, good job. Let's go back upstairs and do some training. Since this dog is going to be eating anyway, right? He, he's obviously fed meals, he's a growing boy. I'm gonna use his ration for training. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use reward training to, look at nothing down there, I don't think, buddy. I'm gonna use the reward to teach him as soon as he removes his nose when he stops pestering me, yes, that's when he gets the food. So it's a strange little lesson, a game we're playing, but it's basically teaching him patience. Yes. So as soon as he stops pestering me, I mark it with the word yes, and then I deliver. So I'm just keeping my fist closed. Yes. Yeah. Mm. He's chomping on it. So you have to be a little bit patient here because he thinks the game, well, I don't know what he thinks. I can't get inside his mind. Yes. But as soon as he removes his nose, as soon as he's, good boy, as soon as he stops harassing me, and then I can just slowly extend the duration of him leaving my hand alone. Because basically he's learning, messing with my hand does not get the reward. Sit, good job. Now I'm teaching him impulse control. He's learning to sit. Also, I don't want to repeat that verbal command. Good boy. Yes. So impulse control, that means I know you want it, just hold your horses. There are many times to use impulse control training, many opportunities. Whenever there is a reward around, like access to other dogs, access to food, access to water, opening of doors, you can always do impulse control type training. I want him to use more of a finesse with his mouth because his teeth are very sharp, right? So one mechanism at play is I'm presenting the food and when I know that the mouth is hard, I'm taking the food away. I'm canceling the reward. But the other thing you hear me doing is using 
a marker, like ah, or nope, or something like that. Just like the word yes is a marker that signals job well done, you're about to get a reinforcement, ah, or something like that, works in the opposite way. It's a way of telling the dog, no, 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 that's not great. And then especially because I'm removing the, war the reward, that's how that works, right? The dog bites my hand kind of hard, ah, ah, remove treat. Cool, does that make sense? Go to your box. What a good boy. What a good boy. What a good boy. Yeah. So these pet owners, they've been working on this crate training. What a good job. Good boy. He's not so good at catching yet, and David's not so good at throwing. But right now, uh, I just want him exceptionally comfortable about being in the crate. I want him to know that the crate is a good place. It's a safe place. Why am I singing? That's just silly. Uh, the ASPCA or the Humane Society, they have great articles on crate training. Many of them will include very simple things like feed your dog in the crate, play games with your dog in the crate, make sure the crate's comfortable, yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to go into a crate training 101 thing here. I just wanted to show you how well that he was doing in his crate. Uh, I think they've been working on this for a little bit of time, but not a whole lot of time. So I just want to show you that this kind of thing is absolutely possible. Now, can I just bail and leave him alone in his crate for four hours, six hours, whatever, and expect that he's going to tolerate that? Uh, I don't think so. This is a young dog. So you want to slowly build up the duration, get the dog used to you leaving, coming back home, leaving from long, for longer periods of time, give him things to do while he's in the crate because what you should be hoping for or aiming for is that eventually the dog just gets into a routine of being confined for short durations and then longer durations until he has the freedom of the whole house while you're gone. Cool? Teach your dog to love the crate. There will be articles below.